see the whole thing. <laughs> this is a little experiment I did with a antique uh, Marvy Barber's pole motor, and uh, it has a, like a four-inch copper disc. It's that type that I think they originated somewhere around the turn of the century. And they may have used them, as far as I could tell, like sometime up in the 60s. And then they went to like a synchronous clock-like motor. But this is like the, this kind of motor was like the forefather of the uh, shaded pole record player motor, kind of. Anyway, uh, so all I had of it originally was was just this the copper disc that turned in this uh this frame right here and i didn't have the drive or anything else so anyway so i didn't have the coil in the center of the coil or nothing so i made this coil i can hold that still hard to get a good shot of it though but anyway, it's made out of uh, one half of the core of a, one of the larger type TV flybacks. So half the core is pulled out. And uh, then I added a little piece that came across. It's glued on there to make it closer to the other side of the core. And it's like real close underneath that, uh, that copper disc. It's only about a within uh, about a 30 seconds of an inch under it can't really see that for this lighting you know anyway i'm gonna oh and uh, also the uh, let me get steady the coil is on a square form like this and uh it's like this one but uh it's it's got 125 feet of a uh, number 27 magnet wire wrapped around it. Uh, approximately, as far as I can best tell, 600 times around because I uh, hand wound it and so it's difficult to tell. But, uh, it's DC ohms was uh, 6.2 ohms and uh, the 27 magnet wire was uh, 50.1 ohms per thousand feet. And I don't have the specs on it, but as far as I know, I think 27 magnet wire is probably a, can handle a maximum of about, I think, of about an amp uh, for that wire size. But I, I might be off somewhat on that, I don't know. Anyway, so I'm going to plug it in just to show now that... Uh, it has some turning force. Oh, and that I left out is, uh, well, you can't really see it, but right up in there. Since I didn't have the drive uh, gear, which originally was a 42 tooth gear, you can't get it no more or nothing. But uh, <laughs> I just got a long axle with a cork that's ground down just the right size stuck on the end of it on there for the drivetrain. Anyway, I'm going to plug it in and uh, let me get a current measurement uh, with it running and just to demonstrate that hopefully it will turn the bottom part because I carried it in here and I'm not sure it has to be balanced just right. right. stop on me my look. Uh, well, not turning real great, but uh, there's very little torque on this motor uh, since uh, the way I got it made, because uh, it's, it's only running off of six volts, and uh, it's a little bit less than four watts, and I forget why it was... Oh, well, that axle's not a real good fit to the uh, raceway in there. It's a little bit loose, and it can get stuck sometimes. But anyway, so one point I want to show uh, 
is okay that's my meter on uh, AC amps so uh, it's on uh, it's showing you can see the decimal point five oh back and forth from point four nine to point five oh so in other words roughly uh half an amp is five hundred milliamps okay uh now i'm gonna unplug it in and i will show one more measurement just so you know that it is running off of the low voltage This is where I'm gonna mess up if I ain't careful. I would have messed up right there if I hadn't. Alright. Now I'll spit this one on. It's hard to do that fast. I'm gonna be taking too long trying to do this. It's hard to get the connections. Okay. Well, all right. Yeah. Where did the meter go? <laughs> well, I'll have to put it on as soon as I plug it in. Better be set right. That thing is plugged in. Oh, just turn around. Okay. There's the output voltage of that transformer. You can see the, you can see the decimal, but 7.05 with it running that machine. It's a little uh, 110 to 12 volt uh, with the center tap. I'm on one side. And anyway, so that's it. Uh, that was the best I can get a shot of it. Uh, that's it on turning there. So it's roughly 7 volts actually because the transformers put out a little higher than normal. And uh, at a uh, half an amp, so it's 3.5 watts. Or volt amps, I probably should say. This is AC. That's one of the important parts I probably left out. This is all AC. But, uh, I guess that's it. Uh, I wish I could show that little cork drive turning. Can't make it out, though. It's kind of neat, though. Oh, and, uh, one last deal. There's a little black mark on the edge I draw with the marker. So you can see under the stress, the speed. Let me put it, let's see. Anyway, it's roughly Mississippi 1, Mississippi 2. It's about, it's turning about 60 RPM on top. Whereas the bottom, I don't know, Mississippi 1, Mississippi 2, Mississippi 3, Mississippi Turning about one time in four seconds on the bottom. So, that's the ratio going on there. Uh, and, man, I can't think of hardly nothing else. Oh, this motor, I think, was originally used by the, uh, Marvy, I think it was, uh, Barber's Hole Company. Anyway, all I had originally was just the frame and that disc in there. I didn't have the rest of it, so I thought it was a pretty cool experiment. Another thing weird that I didn't say, too, is there is no shaded pole on this uh on the coil in there uh, the the inductor it actually just has uh it's the coils on one side and so the the center 
the core of the conductor is oblong. It's, it goes around kind of like a G shape to the other side. And somehow that uh, gave it the spin. <laughs> and that's what's kind of odd on that for me. I hadn't seen that before in anything. And, uh, okay, I'm going to cut this off. That's like 10 minutes. That's long enough. All right.